I've crept over to Adam's swim. Um, well, it's a swim now. It didn't used to be a swim. It used to be a hole in some bushes, but basically to pick his brains on long IQ hook links because he's been using them to very good effect in the UK. Um, and uh, first of all, mate, I wanted to know why you've changed over to such a long hook link and why IQ as well? Um, well, I was just looking for an edge really, Dan. I, I was fishing down at Chillum last winter. I had a little bit of uh, holiday to use up and uh, um, I went when I went down there, you know how busy and pressured it is. Yep. And uh, you're always thinking of, of something different, aren't you, to try and get an edge. And um, with it being pressured and unusually gin clear, it went absolutely like tap water with, with mm. some good weed growth. Um, the visibility of my rigs and, and how they behave was, was really important to me. So I got hold of some um, 10 pound IQ soft and, um, and some size 10 wide gapes and put them together. And um, overcame the mental block of, you know, really small hooks and light links, you know, and worrying about big carp and weed. Yeah. Because um, they're over 40 pounds, some of them, aren't they? They are, mate, yeah. 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 And, um, but I did some, some bench tests before I did, and, and it came through a flying colour, so um, I went down and put it to use. And uh, as you can see from the rig, I mean, I tried to use as low a diameter and, and a, as long a link as I could um, to be totally different. Um, and it gives me that invisibility and different sort of um, performance to any other rig that they're yeah. coming across on a almost on an hourly basis you know yeah. they're coming that's across that's the a... key isn't it that's the key is to, is to just be different enough not to be different for the sake of being different mm. to be different for a reason so you've got lower diameter lower visibility not what they're used to coming across that's right yeah. and, and that's what's getting the bite so to talk us through it you know from end to end how, you know why you've done it the way you've done it and how you've actually tied it okay well this is uh, a boily version as you can see i've got an 18 mil bottom bait on there um, I've got I start off by tying a loop in the end of the, of the IQ right and um, threading on uh, our smallest 0.5 silicon about a two mil long section slide that down to the loop right and then uh, thread the line through the the eye of a size 10 or in this case a size 8 wide gape um, so then what you, you've got the silicon trapping the hair in position right um, before so that's you all, start that's already him. round to that point then before you even start exactly tying yeah. the knot. okay yeah, I push it round to that point and uh, and, and then obviously measure the, the length that you want for your the length of your hair. Right. I mean, this is an 18 mil bait, but I've been using it with smaller baits as well. So you set that, um, and then you start tying your knotless knot. But it's very important how you tie that. And I think a lot of people have problems with low diameter, yep. light breaking strain mono links, don't they? And Definitely. You always hear people saying, oh no, I just lost one. It went just, uh, my mono just broke by the eye of the hook. Or, and, it, you know, and you do hear it sometimes. And um, I think, you can get away with using light links like this if you if you use the right knots and all i do is when i tie the knot the snot the most important thing is to always doesn't matter how well your hooks are finished even with these wide gates which are perfectly smooth always start your knotless knot by whipping on the opposite side to where the closure is right so if the join of the hook's there you go away from the join that's right exactly right. start okay. on the other side right um and then i'll whip down the shank of the hook in the normal knotless knot fashion and um what I do is before I finish the knot and come back through, I do two turns around the outside of the barrel going back down. Yep. And what then then pass it through so it exits the front in the normal way. But what that does is, you know, if you tie normally a normal knotless knot and you and you pull it, it flexes and contracts, it moves, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And I think what happens is when you've got a long fight with a big fish, all the time that knot is moving across the eye of the hook, downturned eye. And I think that is probably what causes them to go. So right. These two turns around the outside, that just those two turns there actually lock the knot solid. Right, and so, you, so it can't do that. Exactly. Right, okay. So when you, when you pull it, you'll see it does not move at all. Right. Um, so those two things, I think, uh, uh, allow you to use 10, 12, you know, low diameter links um, mm. without any problems. Excellent. And now to the untrained eye, that's a pop-up. Because right, yeah. you've got an enormous bit of putty on there, yeah. nearly as big as the lead. <laughs> so uh, it's not a pop-up. I know it's not a pop-up because I've seen you fishing. What is that bit of putty there for? Well, I started using it um, on, a, on a different rig, a short braided rig back in Oxford a, a couple of years ago. And I uh, started catching some tench and some, some big riggy carp that hadn't been caught for a long time. And I, I started using it just to try and pull the hook down and, and give a slightly different... Um, presentation I suppose and, and I, I still don't know why it works but I know it does work right. and it, it now forms whatever my bottom bait rigs are I always have some on there just about inch and a half two inches below the hook to pull it down and to make it I think it just makes it a little bit more difficult for them to deal with right 
Okay. And so, that, the, you know, to the untrained eye, again, if you're casting it out, the bloke next door thinks you're using pop-ups as well, which, it, is, a, yeah, which is a nice little bit of trickery as it, well. I yeah, like that. it looks terrible with that long hair and so on. I mean, it looks absolutely awful. But again, I mean, long hairs is an important part of this rig. Right. Because um, a lot of people are tying their rigs with the bait touching the hook almost, aren't they? Yeah. So get some separation, use a smaller hook, longer link, you know, and, and get, a, get a few things right. going. And so to basically give the hook a, more of a chance to catch hold because it's a little bit further away from the bait. That's right, exactly. Cool. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And why that length of hook link? Um, again, I mean, it's just that the, the, the sort of average length seems to be about six inches or thereabouts. So I just took a number and doubled it and come up with 12 and, and it's been working for me. Right. Excellent. Okay. And the lead, um, yeah, I can see that's that's not a standard inline. So talk us through that. Yeah. This is um, what I've done is uh, I use a an, in, an inline square pair as light as I can get away with it, one and a half two ounces, range dependent obviously, and um, put it on a safe zone leader. This is a gravel safe zone, but uh, at Chillum I was using the weed and, uh, and the silk safe zone colours to blend in better. Right. What I do is I, I take the insert out of the inline lead, right. tap, tap it out on a hard surface and um, then mount two four mil safe zone beads onto the leader and what they do is they butt down against the eye of the swivel right and all it does when you pull it back into the lead it means that the ring is still free to rotate and move without those beads the ring would actually jam in the in the yeah, nose it of locks the lead. doesn't it, it against, does. against the it stops the lead coming off the leader yeah but no more than that that's right yeah right. and i like that movement dan you know it's um I think particularly with stiff links and short links it's critical but even with a long link like this I think it just gives you a bit of flexibility and helps it lie down flat and stops any arching and so on. Right. Um, so yeah those two beads behind in front there inside the lead and then something you put me onto there which is a four mil bead further up. Just so that basically as the fish moves off bang it hits that. Yeah, yeah. a little bit of a backstop and I mean I'd, I'd be using it sort of on the first bit of tungsten or down like that low behind i'm not sure which one is best but they both work well right so, excellent that's the rig well if you're going to get onto iq hook links then that's one to go for definitely completely different from anything i've ever seen before and probably completely different from anything you've seen before use it down your local pit and i'm sure you'll get bites on it